The Bitcoin halving is imminent, yet there is massive political uncertainty. There is a ton of pressures happening on the market. Where is it all going to go? Well, let's dig into the price action to see what clues we find. Today, we're joined from Paul from Definity. There is no one that I can think of that's better to have us joining today to share his insights. Welcome to the Crypto Rain channel and our family. If you, like me, came into crypto because you realized the potential for life-changing gains over a four to eight year period, because that's how long it really takes, and you're looking for discussions on becoming a solid, unshakable, savage crypto investor, like a Navy SEAL of crypto investing, you're in exactly the right place and with the right family, the Rainmaker family. Now, the reason I created this channel is because I was once new to crypto too. It was seven years ago. And back then I was looking for a crypto channel or a group that understood crypto as an investment and discussed the important things like the investment cycles that happen in the crypto space, the projects and the pros and cons of those projects, the risks of each project, and the guesses the upside if it all came together well. And I didn't find that, so we created it. And I say we because it is not just me anymore. It is a family of rainmakers, and you can see them in the chat. You will find them in our free Telegram group. The link to that below is you, and you will definitely find them in our private Patreon group, which gives you access to the Rainmaker private Discord. Now, if you join the Patreon group, know that it will help you connect your Discord to it because the Discord is where the chat actually is, and the Patreon acts as kind of the gatekeeper. Now, this is where the very best discussion and best info is. There are other benefits too, but you would have to join us to find out. Do note, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a crypto investor myself. Paul invests in many, many markets, and none of this would be taken as financial advice. So without further ado, make it rain on that like button and welcome Paul to the show. Hello, everyone. Hi. Yeah, what a week. What a week it's going to be. What a few weeks it's going to be. I think it's batting down the hatches. We've got some, <laughs> uh, we've got some opportunities coming up. And I see it very much like that. I think we were discussing it last week about whether there'll be a correction in our midst. And you actually like kind of called it. You you suggested that there were there were some indicators that something was looking like price what were going to go down, but you didn't know yeah, what. Yeah, exactly. And it, and that's um that's the thing. You know, I I didn't know that there was going to be an attack on Israel, and the market obviously did, and that's why the dollar was so bid. So the pieces the puzzle are being put together and th and that's ultimately why i use charts because you might say you know how could you how could anybody know it unless you're actually sort of on the inside that something like that is going to happen but the price action sort of leaves little trails of of or clues and you have to piece them together and sometimes it's um you know more obvious than others it could be strong data or whatever and sometimes it could be something like this which is you know obviously a kind of worrying situation but mm -hmm. i think we need to put it in context and cool he heads need to prevail and i think we just need to ready ourselves for an, for more opportunities I, I basically i think buying opportunities but y y the market could go down a bit from here and if i you know if i put the bitcoin chart up or go through the charts you can see potentially where this could go um but it's it's um it's a time to kind of cool off a little bit and look look and wait for opportunities, which I think is what we were trying to say last week. Um, you know, it just feels like there's been so much upward momentum, so much hype around the halving, around the ETFs and everything else. And yes, these things can extend and it's still possible that the market will extend, but it's more likely that the halving, for example, is something that we all know about. So that's not new news. It's already kind of factored into the price, as it were. If you're buying on that, it needs to be something else because the market knows it. You know it. I know it. It's not new information. It's factored in the price. Um, so I think the underlying sort of markets are all looking still very bullish. And we, we could start to go through and, and, and have a look at the charts. Um, they just look like they now want to correct a bit before they go higher. And this is the correction that I think we need to kind of ride out it might even be that people will want to move into 
um, some of the altcoins, you know, picking up some of the altcoins is a possibility. If they rotate out of Bitcoin and look at some of the bombed out altcoins, that they, they may hold up quite well. So I'm really intrigued to see what these next two weeks does to the altcoins. Will the altcoins fall faster because they're more risky or will they hold in on a relative basis because they they've yet to have their massive explosions like Bitcoin. So I said Bitcoin, maybe that should be a coin as well. <laughs> um, but what is for certain is the Definity anomaly detector has been so kind of ringing off the hook. It's it sort of advises when um, or lets us know when there's a volatility move. It doesn't. It's not a directional thing, but it is just a indication that something is not right in terms of out of whack and there could be a, a volatile move and it's um it picks up data that is impossible for humans to do and it's um it's been warning it you know before this and and all this and then and in the short term as well so it's been it's been very interesting um to see how the ai works as well and yeah. it's just worth pointing out that you can get access to it uh I, i'm gonna double check with manu but all you have to do is buy a coin I think of a very small amount and you get access to it. So it's a, it's um, a very sort of easy way to get in to see what this really advanced AI is doing. But I think put, putting it together with what signals it looks at and what the charts are saying, I think is where it becomes really powerful. So if you kind of know where the sentiment is and you can read where the chart is, if the markets are really high and then you're getting some more, Uh, we may be losing you, Paul. Warning. Have you lost me? Okay. Oh, there you go. Your voice just yeah. froze for a while. Oh, did it? Okay. So where did you, where did you, um, where have you got me If the price is really high and the anomaly detector and that's Yeah. You, yeah. You can put, put the pieces of the puzzle together yourself and decide whether, um, you know, you're at a high level. Will that mean that the market will correct? Uh, when the anomaly detector signals um, or potentially an important signal from a technical point of view is when the market breaks out from a new hike, sort of consolidates for a bit and breaks out. And I can show you that on a gold chart if we have a look at that. And that that can be another kind of technical stroke anomaly signal. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's a really interesting time. I mean, it feels like if you look at the headlines, it feels quite scary. I mean, you're seeing World War Three warnings on newspapers and stuff like that i think personally it will all settle down i think it will settle down and and then it will be one of those things that the market reacts to and ends up being a buying opportunity but certainly in the short term uh it could get a bit bumpy yeah it's scary right i'd say there's about an 85 percent chance it settles down too um when i was at the university <laughs> many years ago um, Iran was uh, causing some problems and everyone was certain we were going to be at war with Iran and World War III was going to happen because then Russia was going to back Iran and all this domino effect and the world was going to be at World War III and it didn't materialize. Um, that doesn't mean this time it won't. It, the truth is we don't know. The probabilities are high that it does fade down though. Um, great yeah. comments, new people commenting that we don't always see. Carlos says, looks like there will be more dips down. James Brown says, Israel already said they'll attack back. That can cause another mass liquidation. Bitcoin is approaching 60K. Probably if it breaks under 60K, it might dip to 51K or so and then go up. Yeah, I, I think on the, I mean, look, I'm not a political expert, but I would say if Israel can be convinced not to do anything, that would be the best cause of action here because it's um, it, at the moment they are looking like the victims. I think if they attack it, it just becomes, you know, retaliation after retaliation. It just doesn't stop. So somebody needs to intervene and cooler heads need to prevail. Um, I mean, it was an incredible thing to see it actually happening, but ultimately I don't think there'll be a lot to gain by escalating this but i think absolutely right i mean when we get to the bitcoin chart uh we are sitting on a really important level in fact the sort of level that i would say get ready to sell and and uh you know get ready to sell and buy back uh, at lower prices but there is 
a really important support level that we need to break first. And, you know, it's easier for me to show you on a chart than it is to kind of explain it. Yeah, I'll pull up the charts. Just sec. Chris says, uh, good morning, Jay and Paul, and thanks for the explanation of the anomaly detector. Yeah, no worries. It's, uh, yeah, it's very easy to get access if you haven't uh, already, you know, um, but uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, so with regard to the chart, so I just want to show you the gold chart and and sometimes yes. when the market is hitting a high, you know, it goes one, two, three and through it on the fourth time. Even then it comes back for a pullback. And this is anomaly means volatility, basically. And so when you're looking at a chart, um, I'm looking at how people react from a technical point of view. You know what? It, so if you think about the OMI chart, which we're not going to look at this week, but the OMI chart, it's, it's got this sort of resistance, one, two, three. The chart looks kind of different because it's coming from a base. But when it's knocking on these resistance points, it's when they break that tells you that the market's going to go a long way to the upside. Even Sometimes you get a correction before it does that. But that's what you're looking for. And then the moves can be absolutely massive. Now, gold is moving up. The dollar is moving up, which was, again, which we identified the last few weeks and said it was a bit weird that that was going on. Um, people are going to be buying dollars in this environment um, because it's a safe haven currency. The U.S. has got the biggest military and arsenal technology, all that kind of stuff. You know, U.S. versus China, pick either of those, but basically the U.S. So money will run to where it's safe and that's it's a safety play so the dollar could well stay a bit more bid it's broken this 105.88 level which is i was looking for it to potentially touch that and come off but it's touched it and gone through it so there could be a little bit more in this move um it's it's difficult to say really but i i want to i i think now we're getting the reason for the move the clock's ticking for it to reverse so Remember, everything is contrary, and when everybody starts to panic, that's when you're looking to buy. Well, when everybody finds a really good reason for buying dollars, I, I think that's a really good reason to be thinking about getting out of dollars and going short, because, of course, logically, it doesn't make sense, but in market terms, it does make perfect sense. Now, if we put this move into context, um, the rally in the Dow and the risk on assets, right, started in October last year, October 23, when we had a very similar feeling of fear. And there was, you know, we've talked about it many times about who was calling the market down and what have you. So we don't need to go over that again. But just remember how that felt there. And then we had these rallies, this amazing rally with virtually no pullbacks. And now we're having a pullback. So you know, if, if you didn't know the news and you looked at the chart, you'd say, well, it's just a natural pullback. Um, and trends have to do that. I and mean, they do that all the time. Um, obviously, that's the big one there, which happened because of COVID. But generally speaking, the market can't go up in a straight line. It needs to consolidate. And um, having a correction here is perfectly natural. I mean, this is Dow Jones transportation is... Um, it's underperformed. It hasn't broken it out on its high. And this is generally why I like to buy stronger products than the weaker ones. But look at the NASDAQ. I mean, even the NASDAQ's barely really come off its high. I mean, I'm not saying it won't go further lower, but it has, a, you know, it's a potential short-term correction in, in what has been a fantastically bullish market. So let it correct, let everyone bail out and, you know, we'll look for another opportunity to buy. So I think equities could could run a bit lower but i am a bit um i am kind of like how can i put it once the story fits the market a little too closely i think the, the, the contrary opinion uh, side of it starts to kick in and look for reasons why it might not go down quite so far and so fast also we have to remember that the market has been getting a lot of strong data um, which it kind of implies that interest rates are not only not going to be cut, but they might even go up, which is not what the market was expecting. Now, I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, paradoxically, th everything that you're seeing now, um, the fact that equities are moving lower, the, the fact that there's all this fear, um, will actually lead to a greater potential further down the line for interest rates to be cut. Because when the markets go down, 
the policymakers are much more likely to want to support the market. So a strong move lower, lurch lower, would probably be a better case for interest rates being cut. And I know that sounds paradoxical, but that's kind of how the market works. Um, and should I go on to Bitcoin or should we, uh, did you want to uh, talk about anything? Yeah, uh, would you take a quick look at the silver chart? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Chris Ashby silver? asked if you would uh, take a look at silver too. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the chart of silver. It broke out from this short term um, resistance and now it's knocking on the door of this $30, which is high going back to February 21. On a relative basis, silver has really un underperformed badly. Um, if we go back to the, the really long-term chart, you can see that its high was $50. And that was last touched in the 70s, uh, late, late 70s, early 80s. There was a, a corner, um, Bunker Hunt tried to corner the silver market and it went up to, <laughs> to these highs. And then it collapsed and it's taken until, again, the big bull market of towards 2011 after the global financial crisis when everybody then started buying gold and silver and by the way all the economists were really bearish on gold and silver throughout 2000s all the way up to 2011 and then they all got bullish right up here which was incredible um you can see it came all the way back down and then it's it's relative price should be over 50 dollars if it was going to trade in the same way as gold um so i think there's a big catch-up play in silver and this 30, 30 bucks level is is massive. So, you know, I think um, very soon that could that could go, um, and it would uh, it could lurch up to towards 30, 40, you know, maybe even fifty dollars, and and then start even going higher from there. So, there is some interesting moves in base metals as well as well as precious metals. Uh, let's have a look: aluminium, zinc. Uh, that's zinc. Aluminium's broken out. Um, lead is going to break out that's a really nice triangle that's going to break higher and then we've got copper which is being bought up so as i keep saying the chinese market is going to be much hotter than people think they are definitely using this as an opportunity to to buy commodities at cheap prices and all that money is going to wash into the crypto assets further down the line so it just may, may take a little bit of time before that happens but it will now this is the Bitcoin chart on a long term basis. So one important thing to do is to step back, and take a look at what's going on from a big picture point of view. And actually, the level that I thought would would indicate a top, like a double top, it's actually just kind of going through now. So um, it's at a really important juncture, but it's still in an upward trend. Remember, we've been calling it up since down here, you know, so since since these levels here the market's had a fantastic run and so if this is a bigger correction than anything that we've seen so far it's still going to be in an upward trend but i tend to think that a move towards 54 you know this this level here which was important on the way up touching it on the way down and with the, this the secondary trend line um could be the way to go um so it's just going through now now a few weeks back, I mentioned to to Rain that I thought that this would be this could be a head and shoulders top. And then on the show, we looked at how it was constricting into a triangle, and that failed as it broke this level here, sixty eight. So it was constricting, and then then the kind of bottom fell out of that. But it was still in this range, if that makes sense. So it's still um, it still is unclear which direction it wants to go. But one thing that's important to note is the longer that this range goes on for um the more likely it becomes a top because stopping patterns are usually as they suggest a brief pause before the market then accelerates higher and the longer that goes on for the more chance that it's going to turn into a top and it looks like it's turning into a top as we speak so i think a break of this level well, actually right now um i would say it's going to go down towards 54 and that's my next kind of buying point or getting ready to buy um but the long-term trend is up so you know use this time as a as a, an opportunity to sort of scout out the things that you want to get into yeah i wanted to catch up on a few comments we've had a lot of good interaction today i'm really enjoying it 
Um, going back to this, um, Carlos says, even if Israel retaliates to Iran, they'll destroy their nuclear facilities and all the infrastructure in 10 days. Then there will be peace again for the next decade. Israel has the U.S. behind, so no World War III. Neither China nor Russia is really behind Iran, so no World War III. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it seemed like Russia was much more behind Iran What back when, gosh, 25 years ago. I don't know what the situation is now. Um, China's maybe heading into deflation. Russia is all focused on Ukraine. Those Arabs are all in on hyperinflation. What World War Three media fear mongering? So big money will be able to buy cheap, and oil goes up. Interesting. Uh, Dino, say, we. Oh, on, go on ahead. The, Paul, what's your yeah, thought? Yeah, sorry to cut in there. Um, no, I'd yeah, love to hear your thought. Just on the China deflation, that story's been running for quite some time, and one that I've. I've actually been a bit contrary on. I, I think that things in China are much better than the official figures are leading to believe. And I, and this is this is where I got my technical signal in January that things were turning around and it was confirmed in February. And since then, and actually right now, it's a really good point that um, China has been, it's going up. It's been going up, even though all of this news is so bad. So and, and on top of that, this is a very nice inverse head and shoulders pattern, really good technical pattern. So I think that this is a buy, and I think it's going to go much higher than people expect. 12,288, that is a trigger level. Um, I know it went a bit above that. Um, chart's got a bit messy there, hasn't it? But if we look at the symmetry, which I like as well, the time on the left shoulder, time on the right shoulder is just coming to an, an end. Um I would be I wouldn't be surprised if this surprises a lot of economists and goes up a lot more. But that's you make a really interesting point. I, that, I think that's that's definitely one worth focusing on. But we haven't heard anything from China or Russia about what's happened. It's almost like they're not backing it. And that is important. So I hadn't thought of that. So thanks for that comment. Yeah. Um, Dino Dragon asks, is the Omi Homie podcast tomorrow? Yes. So Doctor of Stuff, Randy and I are starting a new podcast. It's usually going to be on Wednesday evenings. Um, so what would it be? Eight o'clock Pacific, excuse me, uh, Eastern time, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time um, on Wednesdays. But we couldn't, Doctor of Stuff will still be traveling this Wednesday and we wanted to go ahead and get started. So we're going to do it tomorrow on Thursday, but normally it'd be a Wednesday's podcast and it's called Omi is my homie. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, join us for that. Tomorrow will be the uh, first episode. So cool. yeah. Thanks Dino for asking that Randy crypto savage. Good to see you brother. So good morning. All still round blessings all Paul and rain. Yeah. Um, Carlo, yeah, when when war oil goes up, war is bad, but good for oil. <laughs> when war oil goes up, war is bad, but good for oil. Yeah, I don't have a lot of holdings in oil, <laughs> like zero. Um, all right. Well, let's look at um, some of the other charts. What do you want to look at? You want to look at crude real quick and then we'll jump over. Yeah, to I, just, I just thought I'd look at crude. I mean, it hasn't moved a whole lot, which actually would kind of back the the view that um, the market doesn't really believe that there's going to be any escalation. And the only things that are showing the pressure at the moment are gold, which was due to break out. But strangely, the dollar was going with it, which was the big question mark as to why that was happening. And now we've kind of got it. So there's going to be a lot of fear um, and you can feel it in the air. There's a lot of fear and jittery kind of feelings um, in the market generally that have to play out. And that's probably going to take a few weeks, but the markets will turn ahead of sentiment. So that's what we've got to look for. How far can we get this down um, before it then starts to get bit up? I mean... If Bitcoin doesn't break below 60, uh, that will be really very, very interesting. But um, at the moment, I don't think it, I think it will most likely break. Uh, but, you know, stranger things have, have happened before. I'm wondering if I've frozen. Have I frozen? Oh, there we go. 
Let's take a look at Illuvium. Um, yeah. We had Wealth Abundance request. We look at ASM. We will add that um, to when we get into the live suggestion. We've got Illuvium, Cornucopias, Atlas, Jasmine, and AGIX that we're going to look at. These are all suggestions from viewers who put it in the comment section last week for us to look at this week. And then we'll definitely take a look at ASM for you. Yeah, just very quickly, I've just remembered that I put, set this up um, just to show you some of the Fibonacci percentages, which is yeah. a, a very good thing to, well, a lot of traders do it. And it, it can give you an idea of where the market might stop and why the levels might be so important. So if we take the a major low and a major high, so we can say that the major low happened around here and the major high obviously potentially we've just seen it right so um if the market retraces 23.6 percent that's the first important point which is at 60,105 um then if it breaks that 38.2 percent is the next level and that comes in at 51 now there's a lot of support at 51 if it's a bigger correction then 44710, that's the next one. But given that it's only, I mean, it's only moved a small amount. I know it feels like a lot, but, you know, given how volatile this is, it, the volatility cuts both ways. It cuts on the upside and it also cuts on the downside. Um, but in normal markets, a a 23% correction is is the first stopping point and it's interesting that we're very close to that now but 38.2 percent could still be hit and the market be in a very strong upward trend so um those are the two levels i'm looking for 60105 obviously the, the round number 60,000. um but if that goes 38.2 is at the 51 to 50 zone which if that gets hit that should hold i mean we say should these are just levels that lots of traders look at and when they work they tend to work bang on so the market hits it and then just rallies really aggressively to show that that level is important if it hits it sort of hangs around and then goes through it and goes sideways for a bit then it's most likely not going to work and it'll just keep going down um but so that's that's that chart so the first first uh pick that we're going to look at is alluvium uh real quick i wanted to bring up this point the curious george made bumper mm. protocol looks amazing right now <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes that the bumper protocol would have been amazing because people had they protected their bitcoin or their eth positions um, yeah yeah we're are sitting now, just pretty wasn't it weren't we saying that last week like yeah. that it's this is what we need what they need is a correction um in order for people to say yeah we should have really just, understand their use case of like oh goodness yeah exactly because when it's all going up it's it's like there's there's no need you don't need insurance in fact um i think warren buffett because he bought insurance companies didn't he and i think what he, he may have said uh i seem to remember him saying something along the lines of as soon as there's been a, a big kind of storm or something where they end up having to pay out a lot of money, you, you, I think he may have been asked, is that a problem? And he says, no, because the premiums just go straight up afterwards. And so they end up kind of making more out of it. And that, I think that's, that's the point there. Volatility means people want to pay more for hedging and they understand the value of it a bit more. But yeah. um, so getting on to the, 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 the pick here. So what we can see is the market has, attempted to break up you know it's got the previous resistance and it's been doing very well since this base here but uh it's definitely in a correction and even this sharp move and the way it bounced very weakly and has come straight back down kind of suggests that we're going to go a bit lower um towards 70 i would suggest um possibly at a push it might get to 55 but i think towards 70 but big picture this is this is in a reversal phase and has more acceleration to come i think um but possibly further down the line so we need to the route will be lower than higher as opposed to straight up now i would like to look at this again soon because volume is dropping you see the volume's going down which is a good sign it means that there is a bit of selling but it's not getting more aggressive it's it's getting less aggressive so it could be that it's going to go a bit lower and and then you know 
the fear in the broad fear that is in the markets that makes people sell everything this could be being affected by that but then ultimately there are willing buyers who want to come in and and turn this around so i think expect it to go a bit lower i'd, I'd have that in my plan but i think longer term it's still a buy yeah i'm liking these prices uh thank goodness like blockchain gaming took a big run mid-october and i didn't love that because i like cheap prices and i always expected blockchain gaming would have a big big year when when crypto goes crazy i think blockchain gaming comes strongly into the narrative and it goes crazy so i was enjoying these really cheap prices and then mid-october um blockchain gaming really came into awareness for a lot of people and the prices ran up and so recently alluvium was over 150 dollars and now it's pulled back almost 50 percent not quite 50 percent well this chart only shows it going to 150 i think it actually went to 160 so it's real close to 50 percent pullback it's getting pretty juicy and attractive again i like alluvium the market cap's already at 324 million where could this go maybe 100x from here like maybe i i think blockchain gaming goes crazy and alluvium has i think a really quality game coming out and this new concept of three games working together and integrating so i like this one and i like it at 86 dollars. it's not as juicy as it was last year but we're not in last year um that was six months ago i don't know that we'll have a, you know a chance at these kind of prices again Often you don't. So, but eighty-six dollars, good price. I think still we're we're in phase two of the bull run. So phase one is kind of catches people off guard, and you have little runs like this going up. Phase two is when you actually have some new people coming in with new money. Now that was happening a lot a month ago. It's not happening right now because of the pullback. But that it was the start of phase two when you actually have new money coming in from new people. Um, we'll have more of that as Bitcoin goes to highs, then you'll have more new money coming in from new people and it will continue. And then phase three will be the blow off top. And the phase three is where the real money is made. We're not there yet. Is that six months away? I don't know. I, I don't know when it is. I, my guess is, is it's about six months away, but I, I don't know when it happened. I just know the chances are really high that it will happen sometime in the next year. Cool. Um, it's buy for me as well. Let's take a look at our next one, which is cornucopias. So the trend rate for cornucopias is this angle here. So you can see how the market's respected this trend line. And it's accelerated away from that and through its previous high, which is which is all great, but this is not sustainable. Not unless we're in a absolutely manic sort of last three to six months of the crypto trend and heading towards a crash but we're not there yet so um so it wouldn't be sustained but it's it's nice i mean some sometimes these these moves are sustained for a bit in individual uh tokens it could be that it's ai related or the market's got um a fire lit under it over some you know products or what have you um <clears throat> so if it's in a space like that, it can run on its own. So you do have to look at everything in its own context. But broadly speaking, looking at the macro picture, we're not in that that phase yet. So the fact that it's consolidated here is is natural. And this chart has shown that it's been um, consolidating for most of this year, actually. So it broke out and um, hasn't actually done a whole lot for the rest of the year. But it's still a bullish chart and it could come back towards this for and um, you know nearly five cents area as support or it could just wait for this trend line to meet it um further down the line but overall i think the risk is that it goes a bit lower just because everything else is going lower and it has broken through the low of the year um at this point or this important support point at um 6.3 cents so I would be braced for a move towards these prior highs as a buy zone, as the first buy zone. 
Um, so in in the short term, I'd say wait, but in the longer term, I still think it's operating from this bull trend. And I would, unless I wanted to kind of short term trade it, I probably wouldn't do a whole lot and just hold on. Um, but uh, so the short term is a wait, the long term is a buy for me. Yeah, I like this one. I'm glad to see it coming back to attractive prices. This is what I really want to see. Um, I like, just say, I really like good prices. So when it was running away and it was up at 13 cents, I was like, crap. Oh, well, it's not time to accumulate more cornucopia. So at six cents, it is under half that price. Now, is it as cheap as it was? Boy, a year ago no it's not and it won't probably be again so it, it just is what it is we have to buy we, we have to look at what options we have going forward now i really like this one they are i think moving their token on base which is a really big discussion that people are having yet the market correcting down has everything down so cool good pickup time maybe it gets even cheaper i don't know i think one of the better plays one of the higher risk but higher potential return plays out there is cornucopia's land but it's even harder to get than cornucopia's token so like cornucopia's token you can get on pancake swap you can get it on uniswap you can get it on these different markets um mexc gate.io um you can get it on cardano's min swap so like there's lots of opportunities for you to be able to buy the token the land is a little bit harder. You have to have a Cardano wallet. You have to have Cardano in there and buy the land and just probably the floor, just the common land, um, probably the smallest one. When I'm speculating on land, often what I'm doing is I'm just buying the floor and then later I'm just going to sell stuff at the floor. So um, I think that's one of the good buys out there. I think land in general in crypto is a good deal. A lot of people aren't thinking about the metaverses out there, but Cornucopia has a game that could end up being like a metaverse. Um, there's Alluvium land. There's Board Ape Yacht Club land. There's Sandbox land. I think a lot of these lands are undervalued and they've been out of sight, out of mind for a while. So I think they're also a good deal. But as for Cornucopias, it is entered definite buy territory for me. All right. So I was actually just completing <laughs> a transaction to get more cornucopias. <laughs> I'm like, oh, look at that price. All right, let's take a look at Star Atlas. Yeah, so Star Atlas um, is one which is in an upward trend. And I'm just going to move this off to one side just for a moment so I can just see a clear chart. Uh, but the... Um, this has been reversing. So we've got a major downward trend. I like to see this because I like to see the downward trend because when it starts to move in an upward trend, it shows me that there's a lot of potential for it to rally. Um, I mean, from a technical point of view, a break into a new high is one of the most powerful signals that you can get. Uh, and that high is quite far away. So it's got a lot of work to do before it gets there, but it's still recovering and we can look at resistance levels along the way. Um, so what's been happening is it's it broke through its prior high, its December 23 high, very recently, which was a, the sort of move that I would get excited about because I like breakouts. But obviously, that's not held. So the market's come back below. A little bit of retest against that breakout point is allowed. But if it spends too long there, um, as you can see it just went sideways for a long time, showed a bit of sluggishness to then pick up the trend again. And stopping out, this would have all been short-term traders stopping because once it does that, we tend not to hold things when they've gone through a buy breakout point. Now, where does it stop next? Well, ultimately, this is big support at 3.7 cents. That was where this move started. Uh, I'd like it to rally a bit before then, so then we could get a nice upward trend line. Um, but at the moment, we can't really draw one. Well, we can with one or two points, 
But the third point is, I think, would reference a more kind of natural long-term upward trend line. Um, so for me, it's looking a little heavy still, uh, the way the rallies are just not managing to, or, or the way support is just sort of giving way and it's closing at the low. It's usually an indication that there's a bit more selling pressure. But with the other coins we mentioned, the volume is still pretty low and it's tailing off a bit. So that is a good sign. Um, what I would normally do in these circumstances is put a Fibonacci retracement um, chart on here or look at the levels to see if any of are coming into play. Uh, it looks like the, the main one's going to be, I mean, below the 61.8 is normally a tr indication that the trend is going to completely reverse, but things are slightly different with more volatile altcoins. Um, so I think that the next major support point is going to be down here. Um, so it's, you know, approaching that. And I can't see other than here, uh, 0 0.0043, um, that that also could be some good support. So it's, it's coming into some good long-term support. But I think, again, the picture is short-term down, long-term up. Um, so I'd be from a neutral position, be looking to buy against one of those support points. And I, obviously, because I'm not looking at the fundamentals and if it's looking really good, I I can't let that sway my view. It's just all technical. If the market breaks that low, I would get out and look for the next kind of floor as to where it might find some support and start moving up again. But generally speaking, this is still working from a reversal phase. and we should see it dig its heels in somewhere very soon but for the moment it's a wait for me yeah um i like your analysis on this i agree uh i like star atlas a lot and it's getting cheap and um and I, it's pretty attractive even at this price that it's at um will it get cheaper i, I think it might what i'm looking at is their market cap is now 74 million now their fully diluted market cap is a little over double that because less you know only 43 percent of their tokens are in circulation okay that's a pretty good amount they've gone through a lot of their vesting pressures i like that they're not as cheap as they were back here at their bottom but they're only 3x over where their bottom was so i like that they're getting pretty good and maybe as paul showed on the chart maybe they do come down further and um those support levels are great buy zones i like star atlas i especially like the update that they've released in the last month of where their first person shooter is and how that's coming along i do love space games they're my favorite like one of my favorite games of all time was eve online um, i love space games that involve economics and a lot of blockchain games involve economics because they find ways to make some kind of trade and persistence. The blockchain is really good at persistence. And so you're, you're trading items for, gosh, real money. Like EVE Online, you didn't really have the option to trade it for something that had tangible real money value. Um, had they done that, I mean, EVE Online would become one of the biggest games in the world. So Star Atlas is the first to really do that for a space game. I think that's a great thing. Now, they're three or four years into production now. I interviewed someone from the team a couple of years ago. I've watched some interviews with the CEO. I don't know the CEO yet. I've enjoyed those interviews a lot. He's very bright. So I'm I'm looking forward to where he's taking Star Atlas. I hope it's a good place. I wasn't excited about Star Atlas back here at these prices. Um, so at these prices, much, much more interesting. Cool. So for me, it's a small buy looking for bigger buys as it gets cheaper. All right, let's take a look at Jasmine. Yeah, I like Jasmine. Uh, it's I like the chart as well. It's really interesting. Um, what we're seeing is this, this compression in price. And if it can hold where it's just shown this little green candle here, then we'll get these rising lows and a compression which should lead to a breakout to the upside um and there's a few ifs in there but if if we look at how it structurally is set up 
as we're looking at it today. Um, it is very different to some of the other markets, which have more drawn out corrections. Um, this is acting far more like it wants to get ready for another move. And even the volume is sort of tailed off again in this in this little decline that's come here. So if we see a pickup in volume as it breaks back over even something very small, like, you know, 1.9 cents, 2 cents, that could be a trigger to take out this high at two and a half. Um, I mean, ultimately, the breakout signal is a break of this new high for me, and that would indicate that we're going to go much higher. But it's acting in a way or looking like technically it's getting ready to do that. Now, all bets are off if it breaks this low here, one and a half cents. That's the low of the range. And traders will trade it in either direction. Um, they're just looking for vol rather than an, a direction from a short-term point of view. But from a long-term investing point of view, it has done very well. It had a great breakout down here. And I think anyone who bought that breakout is not going to be rushing to sell it anytime soon. Um, so I think it's a really interesting chart the way it looks here. And, uh, you know, uh, I'd like to be a bit more cautious. So for me, breaking a new high is where I would suggest, you know, where I would want to buy it. But I could be tempted to buy in a range. So if I had to make a call here, um, I would say it's a, it's a buy. Uh, both in the short term and the long term. But I would be bailing out at one and a half cents because that would tell me that, okay, this has turned into a top, a double top, and it's come down. Double tops are usually more volatile and um, and last a bit longer. So that's why I don't think it is as yet. But, you know, we've got to trade what we see and the market and not what I want to happen. So um, so for me, it's a buy, but I'm be, I'd be willing to change that short-term view if I'm proven wrong on a break of this support. But longer term, I do think there's some really nice support lower down, and I would have expected some buying to come in ahead of that and it, for it to not even get that far. Yeah. Um, this is one that we covered, and this is one that I talked about several times while prices were way down in – dumps and i like low prices um they're still pretty low prices now one of the big things that happened is japan made some announcements about how pro crypto they are and what i always suspect about this coin is a bunch of people from sony left to found this project so it was a big deal and sony executives have huge ties to the japanese government and so i figured there was a bigger play going on here and there wasn't a lot of news about it, but I suspected that there would be. And that's what happened. Just the announcement is what drove it up to here. So there's been a little bit of retrace since then. Um, market caps at 869 million. Where can it go? I, I don't really know. But maybe another 10x, 20x, 30x from here. Um, it was significantly cheaper at like almost one third the price back here. Of where it is now so it's already experienced a little bit of its gains still has some more to run um at this price i don't know it's probably a wait for me because the market cap where it's at um personally i wouldn't be loading up a lot on it uh if i were more into holding blue chips i think this is gonna really go into the blue chips category and if I were looking to hold blue chips one of the advantages of blue chips is you can move bigger money in and out of it and so for those that have tens of millions of dollars that they're investing in crypto, they think very differently. They don't want to be investing in something that they put $1,000 into and hope it goes to 100,000. They don't have time to keep track of all the different ones they'd have to do that with. But because of the size of their portfolio, if they could invest over a four year period and they can make 20X or 30X, which is often what they can do with blue chips, then that is extremely attractive to them. So um, Jasmine entering blue chip category doesn't have, you know, it's already gone three X from the bottom. You know, if it goes another 30 X from here, that's an overall 90 X. And that's if it does another 30 X from here. So for me, it's just a weight. It was really juicy earlier. Um, 
Still some run left to go on this, though. All right, let's take a look at AGIX. Another interesting chart here, um, AGIX. So what we've got is the resistance breakout, one, two, three, you know, not exact levels, but very close. And then the sharp break through that, come back to retest those levels. Let's just put a line across there so you can see what, I'm, what I mean. Often the market, when it breaks into a new high, unless it's a very, very frothy, strongly bullish, you know, raging bullish sentiment, it will come back for a retest. And what's interesting about these retests is if they're good ones, it will touch it and bounce right off it immediately, not hang around like the other chart I was mentioning where it it held on to that level a little bit too long, which was a bit suspicious for it to break through. So this is broken through, come back, touched it, and had a nice bounce, which is showing that there's some good interest still to buy. And these lows are curving up. So if you look at the curve, this low to this low to this low, it's, it's almost like a, a logarithmic rise. So that's that's a good sign as well. As long as it holds on to this support, it's, it's looking good. Um, my only sort of caveat, and it applies to Jasmine as well, it's just a broader macroeconomic environment and whether people are, whether things are going to be said uh, politically or elsewhere that kind of cause a bit of a wave of selling across the board and it gets thrown out with the bathwater. But even if that does happen, there should be some good opportunities lower down at 36 or sorry, 36 cents down here. That's some really good support out of push if it got through the 66 cents level. But I would hope that it it could hold over there. And that would be a very good indication that it wants to go quite a lot higher um, in this next phase. So for me, it's a, it's a buy until proven wrong. Um, I am a little cautious about what's going on. So it's not a, like a big buy. It's just a, a cautious buy. Um, but if it can get through these highs at a dollar forty six and through the psychological one fifty, that to me in this environment would be a major signal because it would mean it's shrugged off all this bearish news and it'd be showing that it's really strong and it'll also be very close to the all time high of the chart. So all those things would be extremely bullish from a big picture point of view. Agreed. Uh in the crypto space an interesting thing that's happening is ai is a narrative that many believe will be the future of technology and and they're probably right to some extent though there's a shortage of places that people can invest in ai and so a lot of people are turning to the crypto space to try to be able to buy in on ai projects a lot of the ai projects in my opinion are just kind of scammy or definitely concerning but there are also some solid ones and AGIX singularity net has person considered the godfather of AI uh, working with them. So they have a lot of credibility and what you've seen here in the charts is essentially the AI run. And so we had some run ups in AI back in early 2021, it kind of settled back down. And then we had some more in 2023, and look at how it went almost to 2021 highs in early 2023 and then it kind of settled down and then it's been running up some more we recently had a big ai run where ai and some mean coins went absolutely crazy and then what goes up and then kind of settles down for a little bit but still there's still more momentum in ai one of my thoughts is that blockchain gaming will be the biggest narrative in this run and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe AI is even bigger. I still think blockchain gaming will be absolutely huge. Um, the amount of forward progress that's been released in the last couple of years in AI is amazing. And it caught everyone off guard, including me. So I don't know. It's hard to find good ways to implement AI into crypto. But there are some ways, right? One of the ways is like the anomaly detector, which uses... It essentially advanced algorithms to detect changes before humans could be able to detect changes. I mean, that's essentially what artificial intelligence is. And so it can pick up things because it can analyze way more data than a human mind could analyze to pick up anomalies. 
before the human brain could pick them up and just give you an indicator to look at. And then you can further dig in and evaluate what you think. Brilliant use of AI within the crypto space, right? So, oh, there's, you know, 87% chance of massive volatility in this token. It is essentially what it gives you or, you know, it'll tell you some percent chance in which token. Um, so sometimes you get pronounced there like 12% chance, whatever. But uh, every once in a while you get chances where they're in the 90 plus percent chance. And it doesn't tell you, as Paul said, if it's going to go up or if it's going to go down. It just gives you an indication of pending possible upcoming volatility. Um, so singularity net, like what is the AI they're working with? I can't say I even fully understand singularity net. Um, I don't have to. Most people that come in and are investing in AI, they're actually just kind of throwing money in the AI narrative because they realize that that's part of the future. And especially if there's some trust associated with what they're doing. So there was a big announcement that like three projects were going to merge together and combine their stuff. Singularity is one of those three projects. Um, what that all means, I, I can't say I know either. Um, but yeah. That's where Singularity Net is at. And um, I, I think there's more run to go in the overall AI narrative. I have no idea where this pro market cap can go from a billion dollars. You know, maybe it can 30x from here. Maybe it can 50x. I, I just don't know. Um, I do think that when FOMO happens, people will be throwing money at AI projects like crazy. So... There we go. Carlos says Singularity Net, Fetch AI, and Ocean have merged into ASI Alliance. There we go. All right. Crypto mining stocks. Good question, Scott. Um, you know, when I was new in crypto, I thought, gosh, I'd like to get some things and, and get some mining, uh, some miners, and just mine some Bitcoin on the side. I know some people that did it and they each of them told me they wish they had actually just waited for a bear market and bought Bitcoin <laughs> and just held the Bitcoin that it's actually more profitable to do that. So the mining stocks, I mean, if if you have to hold stocks, which some institutions other than buying Bitcoin ETFs now. Um, they couldn't buy Bitcoin ETFs. So one of the ways they got exposure was buying Bitcoin mining stocks. Singularity Dow Launchpad is launching Sequoia game outside their ecosystem thing. Interesting. Didn't know that. Brian Walsh, thank you for the super chat. Yeah, I'd, I'd say to Scott's question, I think it's a really interesting one, actually. I wouldn't, I will have a look at some of the stocks. If there's any that you, would like me to look at put it put them in the chat otherwise i'll have a look for next week um but i suspect what you're what you're saying there is absolutely spot on in in terms of i'm just trying to think of what is the advantage of buying a mining stock as opposed to the actual coin itself or coins themselves and i suppose it depends how efficient it is and how correlated it is to that particular asset that it's mining going up so in other words they they've got costs and there's there's certain things that are got to be taken out of out of running a business that might make it underperform but i'm not sure i'm not sure that's it's it's interesting maybe that people actually do gravitate towards mining stocks more than cer certain other coins so i'd like to look look further into that i think it's a very good question yeah, let's jump over and take a look at Wealth Abundance asked us if we would look at Assemble Protocol, which their ticker symbol is ASM. They're yeah, at a forty-two million dollar market cap. It looks like ninety-eight percent of their tokens are in circulation. Okay, cool. So they're fully diluted market cap, but just barely higher. They've been out for a long time, so you can see their token shows up here on Coin Market Cap all the way back in twenty twenty. So it looks like 100% of their tokens vested. They pumped early in the 2021 run, and they didn't go up quite as high in the later run that happened with the Metaverse run later that cycle. So then it pulled 
back, had a really juicy run up here to 16 cents, and now is all the way down at 3 cents. I can't say I know what precipitated this run. We've looked at them once before. Their name doesn't fully tell me, like, so let me show the website here if it will come up. It is struggling on bringing up the website for some reason. So let me try their Twitter. Assemble protocol. Assemble your points on the blockchain. 16,000 followers. So I can't say I fully understand what they do. But um, cross-platform redemption by assemble protocol. So let's really just take a look at the charts. I'm curious to see what you think on the charts, Paul. Um, let me see. You bring up your screen. There we go. Yeah, I was just getting an update because the chart I was looking at on chart uh, Coin Trader Pro didn't have today's price. So we've got for some reason we've got the fifteenth, but we haven't got the sixteenth or the seventeenth. So there's a little gap there, which I'm not sure what's going on as to why that's happened. I was trying to work out whether there was any natural support coming in from this correction because there has been this fantastic rally, um, but it's also reversing very quickly and heading towards some natural market support. But I wonder whether there was a Fibonacci support, but there isn't actually. So um, what I, I mean, it's a very interesting coin in the sense that what I liked about it was during the bear market, in 23 so we got january 23 it hit hit a low and then look it didn't break that low it held above it for all this time and then broke out i think at the same time as equities did last year so it made this this really nice solid base and this was the first buy signal at 1.7 cents now it's still still above that so i think from a long-term point of view as long as it's above 1.7 cents it's still in this bullish trend. Um, I mean, it's very nice technical pattern here with it breaking up, but it's kind of V'd off. It's gone spiked up and then come back just as fast. So any buys around five cents, you'd have to bail, would have bailed out from that breakout point. Um, it just seems to be struggling to find support. That That's the only thing that concerns me in the short term. And I, I think just letting it go a little bit lower before jumping in would be how I'd want to approach it. But it is an intriguing one because it should be coming close to support. There's a bit from over here, 2.5. So two and a half cents might be the first. So from a neutral position, I, I might have a nibble at 2.5 cents and then see if it goes lower. And if it starts to go up, I'd be more encouraged to add some more. Um, but definitely in the short term, I want to see it holding a support level before i jump in um so i think that that kind of makes it a bit of a wait but i'd also like to see up-to-date price action when when there isn't an up-to-date today level it makes me wonder why that hasn't happened um i'm just going to go to the yeah i mean not actually not a lot really it's just been going sideways if we look at the uh the chart on coin market cap and that is up to date which is good um so yeah, it's uh, it's probably got a little bit more more to fall. It is a very interesting chart in the way it broke out, but I think it was a it gave a previously really good indication that it wanted to go higher, and now I think it's in this really strong correction. Um, the way we'd approach that technically is just we got to see some solid support before in, before jumping in, and it's it is tempting, um, but there has to be a good relevant level. And that for me is around 2.5 cents. Cool. So for you, it's a wait. It's yeah, it's a wait short term, but I think long term it should respond to the bull market. So yeah. um, I think it just, just got so far ahead of everything that it's um this is why we're having this correction. Yeah, this juicy pullback, 80% pullback. And we've got this really strong base here as well. So it, I, to me, it's operating in a bull trend from here. And that hasn't really changed. It's just it's been quite a vicious pullback. 
Randy Crypto Savage asked if we would look at Moon River and Fort. So Moon River is this right here. M-O-V-R, is it? Yeah. And so here's the price action. So Moon River is on the Kusama network. Moonbeam is kind of the equivalent on the Polkadot network. What I like about the Polkadot ecosystem and Kusama ecosystems is that they've been bottom of mind for so long. And I find in crypto, like as long as the project is led by good people that are continuing to work on it, that they'll come back in the narrative later. And you see a little bit of that happen here as it was way down at 350. It went all the way to $35, like 10x. Now it's had a juicy, juicy pullback like this. And it's still at a pretty low market cap of $105 million. Now their max supply is infinite. Their circulating supply versus total supply. A lot of their, their supply is in circulation. So their fully diluted market cap isn't very much higher. Um, this is a, a pretty good recipe. Um, two and a half years ago, everyone was talking about Kusama. Maybe it was three years ago, and Kusama was the biggest thing ever. Um, and Polkadot was the biggest thing ever. When China made crypto illegal, Polkadot got punished because a lot of their development was being developed in China, and it really, really set uh, the Polkadot ecosystem back. China since has somewhat reversed some of their policies, I believe. And th there was always really good tech behind it. The, the founder of Polkadot was the person who designed Solidity in the Ethereum project. He designed the programming language that would then work with Ether. Um, so smart, sharp guy. And so this project has plenty of substance to it. And Moon River is one of the main projects or Moonbeam on the Polkadot network with Moon River being the sister project on the Kusama network, which is kind of Kusama is the canary in the coal mine where a lot of the test net stuff gets developed before it then gets rolled up to Polkadot. Though I, my guess is if the Polkadot ecosystem does take off that a lot of things launch on Kusama that never bother launching on Polkadot. So, um, yeah, interesting project, interesting price point. What do you think about where the price action's at? The uh, obviously it's in a strong correction, and it does look like v the volume is going down, which is a good sign. But the moves are quite sharp. I mean, if we if we sort of draw, actually, I thought I was drawing there. Let's see if it will draw. If we look at how this is just sort of curving down, um, we do need to see at least a break of that um before you know i would want to step in but if we take a step back and look at the the where we are overall downward trend this is the base really nice inverse head and shoulders the um central point of that is around october again it started during the the uh, equity move and whilst it's above seven and a half dollars i think it is in a bull trend um it just it needs to dig in some support before we can step in. I mean, I don't want to step into anything that is falling so consistently, especially so fast. But one of the interesting things that we've seen with some of the other coins is that when the market sort of overshoots on the downside or panics like this, um, it can be near the end. So it might not be necessarily right now, but it could be the beginning of the end of the correction. And usually what happens is there's this, this capitulation that um, it could be some news that's come out. I don't know. I don't follow that side of it, but maybe you kind of know a bit more about what's happened. But if there, there could be some announcement that's caused a bit of a shakeout, and then the market settles down for a bit and then starts to go back up again. But for the short term, I think the correction hasn't fully run its course, and we need to see some support digging in. Um, there was some. I would have said prior, like prior to this move down, I would have thought around $12 um, would show some support, but it's gone right through that and hung around. So it's not really showing that as a super sort of juicy level to use your terms. Um, but, you know, it, it could it could still turn from there. 
but I think there's so much momentum to the downside. It could get just a bit cheaper before it then turns around and around this seven and a half or sorry, eight and a half to eight. Um, where is that now? Sorry, eight dollars uh, level. This this area here where you can see the first really sharp acceleration in both volume price and everything else. That for me is where it feels like it wants to go to. Uh, before the train goes up but as i say and um, with the other coins as well this is a reversal pattern which means that the trend is now up from here it just looks like it got overexcited on the upside and that's why we're having such a sharp trend correction um, but if it can move up from here in a more uh, sustainable i guess is the right word um, way then you know there should be much more upward price action it's just got got ahead of itself i've said before it's nice when things go up when you're long but the the problem is if they go up too fast the the risk is that they just come back so fast and there's just there's too much volatility there it's much better if they're moving up slowly or smoothly um then that's much far more sustainable so anything that moves as crazily as this um yeah great if you're long it but it's 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 not going to keep doing that unless we're in a very different phase of the bull market, which, to be fair, as, as I keep saying, we are heading towards that, but we're just not there yet. So for me, in the short term, it's a it's a wait until it digs its heels in at some support, and there's some levels there that I think around eight, which would be a good place. But long term, it, it's it's going up or should go up, so it would be a buy. Yes. Um, I'm excited about this one, and I like to see cheap prices. And people see how fast things can take off, and what I see often happens. The, the way I I do it because I I don't know how fast things will take off. I look for projects of substance that I like, and when they're cheap, I just dollar cost average into them. Because sometimes there's an announcement, and you just see how fast they can shoot up. Because this one went from seven dollars to forty something dollars in a matter of like a day and a half, two days. That's how fast it happens, and so you find yourself on the outside of that. It's not a fun place to be on a substantive project. So um, yeah, that's why sometimes it's frustrating with the accumulation strategy I have. Because what often happens is you accumulate, say I were to buy some more here, then it goes cheaper and it goes down to half that. And then you accumulate some more and then maybe it cracks a little bit downwards. And during that downward time, it, it can be really frustrating because you're like, oh, I could have got so much more for cheaper. Dang it. But then when it absolutely takes off, you forget about all those pains of, man, I bought a bunch, but then it got cheaper because then you're way up on what you bought at on all those different price levels. So that's the, that is the approach that I've been taking in the crypto space. It sometimes is frustrating until that blow off top happens. When that blow off top happens, all those frustrations seem to be forgotten and melt away. But during these periods of sideways trading, um, they're very present on your mind. I'm sure they're very present on a lot of your minds. Because I know a lot of you do similar strategies to what I'm doing. All right. Um, Scott Walden said Griffin mining. So maybe on your chart, you'd be able to find Griffin mining. G-R-Y-P. Oh, so that's... We can a, take a look at a... This will be a Bitcoin mining stock. So, so it's an actual stock, is it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, I'd be, I'd be interested in... <clears throat> excuse me i'd be interested in um in up and coming ones like not ones that are kind of major on the nasdaq but just perhaps really small i wonder where where you'd find those that's a, it's a it sort of opened up a another really interesting kind of question about mm -hmm. um other assets but see look Ooh. you don't have to be you don't have, yeah their exactly. price has gotten punished you don't have to be a technical analyst to see what's going on there, do you, really? Um, look, we've got both moving averages going down. If you want to keep it simple, I wouldn't touch it until at least the, these two have crossed over. That's the 200-day and the 60-day. Um, 
I mean, there's nothing special about those. One's just long term, one's just medium term. But it's whilst it's below it, you, I wouldn't touch it. Um, so it could be that, well, I, I say it could be, one can start to speculate as to why it's going down so fast and um, what the problems may be, but you'd have to just do the fundamental research. Technically, I can't step into that at all. Um, now, you might say there's asymmetric risk, which is what a lot of people say when stocks hit a very low level and at $1.33, your downside risk is $1.33. But it's a mistake to think that just buying something because it's inverted commas cheap, um, it could still go to zero. And I'm not saying it will. I'm just saying I'd much prefer to see this going through two and then higher to buy it than trying to guess where the low is going to be. Because the game of trying to pick the low is something that you can spend a long time doing. And at what point was it too cheap? You know, we had some rallies there which looked okay, but it's still it's still going down. So it needs to, in, in technical analysis, we look for signals that the market has hit a low. And those signals are basing price action, which is it going sideways with really bearish news. So people panicking out, but the price action doesn't respond. It goes sideways. A kind of massive panic. There's not much room really for, for panic. We've kind of seen a capitulate like a big capitulation and then a rally is usually a sign that the market's near the low something like that now we don't have either so for me i'd have to just wait until we get that um or, or something like it so yeah for me it's it's definitely a wait and i think for of all the products we've looked today most other things have kind of looked better um because at least with say Bitcoin, it's yeah, it's high, but it's it's correcting in a in a bull market. But this is just in a bear market, which is really surprising. I've got to say, I'm I wasn't expecting to see that um, in this environment. So if things are going well in this environment, and it's going down. Um, you know, there, there might happened? be some other problems in this company because I can't imagine all the mining stocks look like this. I, it's probably just this one. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. So what is it specifically that this one is having issues with? Maybe it's regulatory. Maybe it's something else. I don't know. That's yeah. All speculation. I, I like buying yeah. cheap, but I'm scared on this one that there is some substantive problems that the market identifies. And I would need to like talk with the team and everything before I'd buy this. Now, stocks are out of my wheelhouse. Not that I don't know anything about stocks. I I'm a fundamental investor and fundamentally I haven't been tracking what's going on on any of them. So I just can't buy them and I can't buy them using price action metrics either. And not this because um, the only way I'd buy this if fundamentally I had reason to believe that everything was turning around and it had a rosy future because the price action indicates trouble here. Lots of trouble. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, great show, Paul. Thank you for joining us. Um, Thank you. Enjoyed all the audience engagement as well. That was made this a lot of fun. Thanks. Yes. And thanks to, to Brian and uh, for all the comments. Really appreciate it. And um, look forward to next week. Thank you so much. All right. Well, the crypto market has its ups and downs. I wanted to share with you a comment from last week's video that I wanted to talk about. And, um, well, that's not what I was looking for. Shoot, I think I had that comment up. Now, the crypto space, this bear market can get frustrating and it washes out a lot of people. Why? Because bear markets are hard and they're boring. And I, I felt like this comment perfectly encapsulated this. Okay. Um, crazy. Uh, Crazy AI says, how many periods has Omi had in bullish momentum, bullish divergence, higher highs, higher lows, W by indicators in plus three years? In other words, just kind of frustrated that a Comey hasn't really gone up yet. And that is part of being in the crypto space. It is frustrating and it washes a lot of people out. And that's why so many people get washed out. 
the numbers are really this, that 5% of people do really well in crypto investing. And you think, well, why wouldn't more do better in this? Well, because they just can't make it through the frustrations. So part of the reason I created this channel is just to share with some people, those who would listen and many people won't, what it takes to do well in this space and share with them so proper expectations are there. And it's still not going to like, quote unquote, save everyone. Still, some people are going to act emotional. They're going to buy the wrong things. They're going to buy at the wrong timing. But at least I can set proper expectations with them and tell them the correct principles behind this. And a lot of people want to argue with me and that's okay. That's cool. Like, you know, if I, I'm not a Messiah, I don't do everything right myself. I do know what principles worked. I've proven myself which principles work because I've done really well in the crypto space in the top 5%, well in the top 5%. And so I don't doubt that these principles work um, and the patience pays off. And yes, yeah, Sokomi is one of my favorite projects for potential risk versus return. They're doing all the right things that when this market goes crazy and it will, barring World War III with EMPs detonating everywhere and frying all the electrical circuits, I don't know what things look like if that happens. But if that doesn't happen, there will be another crypto bull run. And when that happens, people will really start to recognize digital collectibles versus physical collectibles and that digital collectibles are superior. And then the Comey is going to do really, really well in that environment. And that's just what I'm waiting for. Now, this time is can be frustrating because you got a taste of what things can look like when they're going up and then it pulls back. And you might be frustrated because you might have even bought more as it was going up. And now what you bought more of is now underwater. That's frustrating. I've been there. I've done it. In fact, some of what I recently bought is now a little bit underwater. Why? Because I don't have a magic crystal ball that tells me exactly what price they're going to be the next week, the next day, the next month. I have to make my best guesses at the time. And still what I was buying a, a week ago, which is now down is still going to be considered cheap versus in the future. And so I, I have to make my best guess going forward. Um, you know, I'm glad Paul shared more about the anomaly detector that Definity has. So you have to own some in order to benefit from that. Do note that Definity is a strategic partner of the channel and so is OneChain. OneChain has updated their AI or their interface for their bridge. I use their bridge to transfer money from one side, uh, from one chain to the other all the time. I love the bridge that they have. It's great. I appreciate our strategic partners. They give us tokens to give away when we do our Friday live streams. All right. So join us, join myself, Randy and Doctor of Stuff tomorrow. That will be 5 p.m. Pacific time or 8 p.m. Eastern time for our first episode of Omi is my homie. Obviously, it's a pro Omi <laughs> coverage. It, it doesn't mean we won't address FUD and we won't address those things, but each of us are very strong believers on what Vivi is doing and Akomi is doing. Um, if you did happen to get, if you stake 10 million Omi in the VV app and got the secret rare Ekomi logo, you need to reach out to me so I can put you in touch with Sanjay, Mr. MC1.eth, because he's put together a group for those secret rare Ekomi logo holders on Telegram, and it is a great group. So reach out to me if that's the case for you. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy this rap. I will tell you in the future, there is a new song coming. It might be a month away. It might be a few months away from release, but it'll be a fun one. Came into the space, chasing all of the games, chasing yeah. the pumps and all of the hype trains. But like in life, uh... Shit, right before you could was told to buy when it was pouring like a rain Making sure, sure. I buy when it's down Don't chase the boats that I miss uh, Cause I always made the time in mind I take the one out cause I'm patient like that And I'll wait for the right time I sell when it's high I buy when it's low They call me rich They call me smart I'm just a rainmaker running the show Calculated investments I don't leave with my heart uh, The principles are simple to leave in a lot Why 
when it's boring, just gotta be smart I sell when it's hype, like all the channels they pump it That's when I was selling a parabolic to dump it They call me rich, they call me smart I'm a rainmaker, making my own start I'm with the future, learning the past Makes the time fly by, years going so fast The game plan is mine, I'll own it now When I reach the top, haters asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh, the Time is never better, the time like the present This next five years is a gift and it's feeling like heaven it I'm is. committed to learn Studying to know that Nothing comes easy But when knowledge the game show Sticking out this wrong Cause soon we'll come a bear market Learning and growing And when it's slow would be the target They say it's come out Bitcoin is dead The massive decreases Can get to your head Sticking around The time is better I'm strong like that I'll let the others be fretters Two years of time The ball will bring back the games And make it worth the effort Cause here comes the rain So let's go rain makers Let's make it all happen The goal of the hate They the haters be crapping I'm here for five years Let's do this together the time is bright, the time could be better They call me rich, they call me smart I'm a rainmaker, making my own start I'm with the future, learning the past Makes the time fly by, years going so fast This game plan is mine, I'll own it now When I reach the top, hey, it's asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh, Haters be hating, the time to slow down Addressing what to say when I'm wearing my crown They're chasing green candles like someone who was new I got a vision that was bigger Helping me to push through I'm still human and sometimes it is rough And that's what makes me special Simply I stay tough Cause I'm a rainmaker Investments I love And I follow what I learn